So today I'm here with Andy Bromberg, the CEO of Echo. Andy, thanks for being with us today. Really appreciate it. And Andy, I'd love to just dive right in. Andy, there are a lot of things about you that stand out, but one of them, the first thing that springs to mind is relationship. I consider you a very close friend. I've known you for a long time, but there are a lot of other people who consider you a friend as well. That's not coincidental. I mean, I think that you are naturally curious about people. You naturally care about people, but you also have a way of showing it in a way that investors, customers, recruits, so people before they join and then employees after they join, really feel it and they feel that you care about them. How do you do that? How do you pull that off? Because that's a skill, frankly, that we all need to learn because investors are more likely to invest if they like you. Customers are more likely to buy if they like you. Recruits aren't even going to join if they don't like you. And employees are much more likely to stay if they like you. So Andy, everybody likes you. We all need to learn this. Please teach us. How do you do it? How can we do it? like you do it. I appreciate that, Matt, and thanks for having me. First of all, high praise coming from you, who I think a lot of people feel the same the same way about. Also, I'm not sure that I, I think I'm good at that, but I think there's there's still always room to, to grow. But a, a few things come to mind, I think, in terms of what works there. It's a combination of a little bit of process, I think, at some level, and thinking rigorously about relationships, and also an attitude. And I'll start with the attitude, because I think that's the more important piece. I really deeply believe that every person in every conversation is happening with me for some reason, and I should treat all of those as something really valuable. You know, I'm not perfect about this. I forget it sometimes in moments of stress or craziness, and, you know, we all have, have crazy days, but I just tend to think that all of these things are happening for a reason. I've got something to learn from every person I talk to. And it's not necessarily something tactical to learn. It's not that there's a piece of information to tease out from every conversation I'm going to learn some you know, piece of information that really matters. It's just that through my interaction with each person, something is going to get added to me and to who I am. And so I should treat that as something really special. And and I find that, that happens best when I'm just really curious about people, you know, because I, I think we forget so often we're living in our own heads and we're moving through our own lives. But I think as Andy, that I have 27 years of life. That's an incredible amount of experience and things I could talk about. Like I could talk for literally years about what's happened in my life. And what we forget sometimes is that everyone else has the exact same thing. Like we, we characterize people as these kind of like one dimensional things or like, oh, I know who that person is. Like I, I get, you know, their thing. I understand them. But there's no way that you have picked up everything interesting about someone because they've got decades full of life and experience that you have not heard from them. And so just taking that attitude of curiosity and enjoying those interactions with people and being curious about them and what they're interested in and what they're thinking about. And it's, it's not a tactical thing. It, it genuinely just feels better. Like t talking to someone and asking them questions and being curious and them being excited talking back at you is the most enjoyable version of a conversation that could possibly exist. So why not gun for that? outcome. You know, you talking about pitching investors, like I think about this with respect to investors. When I talk to an investor, I want to hear from them. Sure, I might be pitching them eco and pitching them my business. Yeah, that's that's true. But I don't really get a lot out of pitching my business over and over again. I know my business. I know why it's exciting. It's not doing anything for me to pitch it. Everything I'm saying, I've said a million times, I know it. But asking them about their perspectives and their beliefs and things that they are thinking about is really enjoyable. And so that's one big piece of it is just that attitude of feeling like the most enjoyable conversations are those where you're picking something up from the person across the table, across the Zoom from you and taking joy in pulling that out. And let's pause there for a second because that's a huge thing. I love to talk about the things I love and you give me that chance because every time I talk to you, you ask me, hey Matt, what's up with, and you rattle off the things that you already know that I love because I've shared them with you before. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. I get to talk about the things I love and you created that for me. So now I like you even more. And it happens every single time we talk. So it just gets better and better and better. So yeah, that's a huge, huge point. And I love that it comes naturally to you. But by the way, it doesn't have it to. It doesn't have to. If, if the others, it doesn't come naturally, they can still ask the same question. Absolutely. And, and I think the thing that people miss sometimes is that sometimes that feels unbalanced a little bit. You're like, well, wait, you're like asking that, but they're not, you're not talking about your own thing. Just talking about myself, for example, I am pitching eco all day, to customers to recruits, to investors, to all of that. And so someone asking me to pitch eco, I'm thrilled to do it, but 
that's not going to like peak my excitement. Like if I just said to you over and over again, hey Matt, like pitch me the Mashari method. That wouldn't actually do that much for you because you're like, I, I can. So it's about the other things in your life or or specific things with the, the Mashari method, some person on your team or something that you're not talking about as much. It's not about asking people to just pitch their most obvious thing. It's about engaging with them on the things that are going to be giving them joy at that moment because then they'll express joy to you, which will make the conversation joyful on both sides. And that can happen either direction, but it's easier to prompt it yourself and say, you know, ask someone about something that you know is going to give them joy because it's selfish. Their joy will then give you joy and it feels better start to finish. And I imagine people listening to this will think, well, how do I know it brings them joy? How will I know what to ask them about? And of course, an easy answer is just ask them, what are you excited about these days? What's giving you joy these days? They'll tell you. Ask them that and just listen to people. You know, if you t if you have a conversation with someone and it's even the slightest bit interactive of a conversation, every person mentions things that they're excited about because that's what they're excited about. So of course they're going to mention it or they're going to ask questions that indicate some interest or they're going to give some perspective. Going deeper on those things, it requires listening for the things that are piquing someone's excitement. Someone might start asking a question about some very specific little piece of it. And it indicates to me that they have an interest in that specific little piece. And so, yeah, let's talk more about that. And that will then expose something that they're really excited to have a conversation about. But let's, let's also, even though you said this isn't tactical, let's also go a little bit further and get tactical. Because Andy, I've shared with you things before, and you remember everything or seemingly remember everything that I've shared with you. You remember the names of my kids. You remember the places that I've lived before. And as young as you are and as good as your memory is, I don't think it's possible that you're just capturing that all in your brain and staying there. There must be some process, some method, some tactic here because it's too good. I feel honored that you took the time to capture the information that I shared with you in your process. But what is the process? I appreciate that as well. I, I, I take notes on calls when I'm on them. I, I, I am fortunate to have a pretty good memory for these things. And I also think there's a little bit of an illusion here. You just said it. You think that I've remembered everything you've ever told. And I undoubtedly have not. But I've remembered at least a few things. And that's really all it takes for someone to feel like you've got a great depth of understanding. It could be anything. You know, I could have forgotten where you've lived, but I know something else. And so I'm going to ask you something else. And you're still going to feel like I know all of it. It doesn't have to be complete. Even our closest friends, right? You, you don't remember every single thing about them. You forget stuff. Sometimes it happens. But if there's enough surface area, it works. And so I, again, I think it comes back to listening and being attentive and things are going to stand out. And, you know, I may remember certain things about you because they have some personal relevance to me. And then I may not remember certain things about you because they're not I have no relationship to those concepts, and so it doesn't do anything for me. But I know a lot of things about how you're living where you are right now because the way you're living is really appealing to me. So, of course, I'm going to remember those things, and I'm going to ask you about them because it strikes a chord with me. But then there's other things that I'm, I'm not going to remember. I do think there's some process worth noting. I do have a setup where all the people that I stay in touch with or want to stay in touch with, I have reminders to reach out to people. The other thing that is important and underrated is that thinking about when people want to be reached out to or need to be reached out to, you know, I tend to think of like reaching out as being a way to share in joy of interaction with someone that I consider a friend. That's what I'm looking for is to give them some joy by reaching out and for that to get reflected back to me and to have a better day as a result of all of that. The time when someone most wants you to reach out, even if they don't know it, is when they're having a tough time. Your founder friend who just raised a monster Series C or whatever, yeah, you should reach out to them and congratulate them, but like they don't need you to reach out. Because everybody else already Everyone else already And they're already feeling good. If you know something tough is happening for someone or they're like going through a hard time or, you know, you heard a rumor that something bad is happening or you saw something in the news, whatever, that's the time. People are so joyful when you reach out to them in those moments, even if it's hard for them, there's great gratitude that that makes you feel better, which makes them feel better, which makes you feel better, which makes them feel better. And that's what we're going for here. I just think being attentive to those chances that you can brighten someone's day or week in a material way by reaching out is, is really important too, and makes both of your lives feel better as a result. Andy, I learn something every time I talk to you and I just learned something. I mean, that's amazing because it's so true. When people, when I feel joyful, I feel confident. 
I reach out to whoever I want to talk to. People reach out to me and everything's great. But when I feel sad, I also feel shameful and I also feel underconfident and I don't want to reach out to anyone because I don't want to burden anyone. And there I sit alone in the shadows with no one to talk to because I'm not willing to reach out. That's when you create the bridge. My God, how valuable that is. Wow, I'm even more glad that I'm your friend now. So I know that if and when that ever happens to me, I'll be getting a call. Andy, you are, you're freaking awesome. Right back, Doctor. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome, my man. <laughs>